So I'm applying to go somewhere, and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, you know? And then the person I was with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else, and then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist, and if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time when there's other solutions that we can look to, I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that, yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. I'm not a medical professional. I don't even know if time blindness exists, but you can just put on a watch that rings every hour and it will help you to remember what you're doing or you can set an alarm clock. Or I can be just like you and say, I'm really missing an eye. Half the time I'm blind. <laughs> Nothing to see here ladies and gentlemen. Are all white men banned from police force in Canada? Sure looks like it. Thousands of students could have been able to go to school and have books and have housing. But instead, our chancellor, who is a very cruel man, decided to send thousands of dollars worth of funding paid for by the taxpayers into the trash. Are you concerned about this jeopardizing your job? For real. What job do I have if the students don't have a future? This is a teacher from the University of California. And in all honesty, you don't look very stable. So I guess you without a job, maybe that's why they might have a future. That's stable. I would like to see the sign that says no hammocks. We've got, we've got a whole... Where's the no hammock sign? We've got a whole no. list of things. No, no, no. Get I can't see you. You can't see me. You don't come out of that. I'm not here. The police. No, no. Huh? No. Oh, my God. No. This is, oh, my no. God. Oh, my 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 God. I said I'm going to be You see that? I don't even know if it's a troll or it's a mental health issue, but the fact that it's happening so much, it feels like a normal issue, and that is the issue. Levon Longstreet is a second grader and the star of our next Black in America doc, Love This Kid. But the problem is, when you don't have fathers... You grew up without a father. How do you feel like your life would be different if you had grown up with a father? I'd have had some discipline. I'd have had... Uh more confident. Another suspect in the Christmas Weekend Mall America homicide was arrested in Georgia today. Lavon Longstreet, 17, charged with murder. His mother, Erica McMillan, drove him there. Chief Broker Hodge said she was arrested today in Golden Valley. I'm not blaming her for everything, but I can bet money that if a father was there, the chances that this might happen is kinda low. Well, first of all, you tell me th this is the culture of the black people. Well, maybe the kid is dark white and he has a black father. You're telling me he needs to deny his culture because the way he look? By that knowledge, all the black people with cornrows and dreadlocks should be singing Celtic songs of the Vikings. Oh, I'm beating your way. So all you is whites and brown beaners, taquachas. Taku? See, see, I'm Mexican. I can say what's up, me. If he can, then my sons can. Look, they have my eyes, not my skin color, not my nose, but they got my dick. Surveillance video shows the female postal carrier putting items into a mailbox in front of a home in Dublin Monday afternoon around 4.30 when suddenly a masked man followed by a second person comes up from behind her. The postal worker who asked not to be identified describes being robbed at gunpoint. Somebody came behind me and boom, just hit me and put a gun to the back of my head. And he said, give me your keys. You don't want to die, do you? I go, no, no, no. So I reached in and got my keys, gave him my keys. And he goes, where's your phone? You got two minutes. The carrier went to the mail truck to get her phone and handed it to the armed robber while fearing the worst. Oh my God, I'm going to die. But the two men ran away after taking the keys to mailboxes and the truck along with her cell phone. She went to a neighbor for help in calling 911. What I find odd in this situation is not the fact that she is robbed by specific people. What I find odd is she says, please do not reveal my face. Oh, me. If we're going to keep printing money, why do we have taxes at all? I've asked that question in the budget committee. Nobody can answer it. 
Like if we're literally not going to actually adhere to a budget, balance the budget, constrain spending, and do the responsible thing, which we never do, why on earth would we not just get rid of taxes? Right? If you're going to spend almost twice as much as you take in, which we're getting dangerously close to. That, 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 that is blasphemous. It's a genuine question. You want to tax us so you can help us, but then you want to print money also so you can help others way more than you help us. Mm. I'm just not going to have a man's baby just to have a man's baby. If a man wants me to have his baby, I have two requirements. You're going to get a tattoo of my face on your body because it's a body for a body. What? My body's gonna change forever. Your body's gonna change forever. And my push present is either a car or a house, preferably both. But I definitely want a tattoo of my face on the father of my child's body, preferably stomach, because my stomach is gonna look different after a baby. So mm. your stomach should look different. Too. Well, lady, if you wanna be that unreasonable, please accept the fact that you're going to have a house, a car, and a man is going to work hard so you can keep that. Maybe you also wanna work and keep your own freaking money. How dare you? Don't you even dare come one day and be be like i don't feel loved so much anymore like the past because you're always working you don't connect with the kid i'm always working then go do what you do better go make money okay you're never home i'm home i'm helping may i have sex there is no money you're not a prostitute <gasps> i want a divorce for what you never show you love me you always work i'm doing everything you want i work hard because it's not what you said it's how you said it Slay! <laughs> A few weeks ago, I said I don't do my husband's laundry, and a lot of people were saying, whoa, 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 those are small acts of kindness. Why wouldn't you want to do that for your partner? But here's the thing, small acts of kindness that are mostly domestic labor just add up to work at the end of the day. So here's a list of things that I don't do for my husband. You all know I don't do his laundry. He can do that himself. I do my laundry and we do the kids' laundry, but he does his own. Oh. I don't cook dinner. He cooks dinner every single night. I do breakfast and lunch for us and our kids. I don't pack him a lunch. If he's hungry, he'll figure out what he's gonna eat for lunch the same way that I do. <laughs> I don't make his doctor's appointments because guess what? He's not making mine. Would it be kind of me to do that? For sure. Is it my job? Absolutely not. I want him to be healthy, but he's a grown ass man and he can book his own appointments, right? There's a lot of things that I don't do for my husband. I don't schedule his haircuts. I don't pack his clothes for vacation. Right? I don't do those things. I don't buy him new underwear when it's got holes in it. All of those are things that he's a grown man and he can do himself. Can I do small acts of kindness for him? Of course I can. And I do. I see a vinyl that I think he's going to like because he's creating a vinyl collection. I buy it. I'm at the store and I see something that I think he might enjoy eating. I buy it. I find a new non-alcoholic beer that he wants to try out. I buy it. Right? Those are small acts of kindness. Doing his laundry, cooking him dinner, making him lunch, booking his doctor's appointments, all those things, that's domestic labor. Those are chores. Those are not acts of kindness. Oh, wow. That's domestic labor. Those are chores. Those are not acts of kindness. Do I do them occasionally when he's working a lot? Of course. Do I cook dinner sometimes when he's had a really long day? Of course. But me not doing that does not mean that I don't show him love or kindness. They're different things. It is not my job as a wife. It is not in my job description to do all the domestic labor as small acts of kindness to my partner and receive nothing in return. I agree with this commenter. If it's going both ways, fantastic. But oftentimes domestic labor, especially when you have children, adds up. And so no, not the day. I am not my husband's personal secretary or his personal assistant. I am none of those things. I am his partner. I am his equal. And I do not have to do things to cater to him and serve him at all times to be kind and loving for him. If she does her own laundry and the kids laundry, but not her husband's, that means she separates his and specifically makes sure not to throw it into the washer when she's doing her load. This kind of self-centered pettiness and scorekeeping is dead to a marriage. They'll be divorced in 5 years if not sooner. Why would you want to treat the person that you have a baby with as if he's just an extra person that you might help? No, you have to sleep. I know. I want bed. You're sick. No, I'm not. You're sick. <laughs> no. Lay down, be quiet. And before you say, oh, I bet he beats him up. No, 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 no. You can just use your words. You can use your eye. And you can just be very consistent with your no. <laughs> Stop, take the PlayStation, take the candy, go to bed. Consistency changes the view of a kid. Because these days we create emotional kids raised by emotional people. And they are way more dangerous than the masculine man. Because abortion doesn't remove the trauma of rape, it adds to it. And a child should not pay for the sins of their father. It's traumatic for a woman to live with a child. And you know that. You know that. Yes, I do know that. 
Excuse me? What do you know about it? You're not going to touch me. You're not going to touch her, you guys. I'm not, I'm not going to touch her. Good. Then you go ahead. So you're saying people should be discriminated based on how they were Oh, you lower conceived. your voice now? So you lower every, your voice now? You were further away, and you were talking over me. And here's the thing. So what about every single person that's ever been conceived and raised their life less valuable? But what about every the life single, of that no, mother? Answer, what about every single mother? person who has been conceived and raised, is their life less valuable than ours? I'm not saying that. Ours. I am saying that it's more traumatic for a mother to the live with the realization that, it is, it is not. that her race is alive you know what's traumatizing child. living with regret knowing that you ended your child's life no it's not that's no it's traumatizing. not my grandmother had to have four abortions do not take another step towards me you're the one walking forward dude dude why aren't you in there you saw that right there he's walking in the direction of a woman blaming the men i wonder who is the emotional one don't get me wrong Welcome to 